on all streaming platforms Two, now. One. I don't care if this world comes six hours late, this video is blown. <laughs> right? The first two times I shot for Bonner, I hated Bonner's guts. Who is supposed to be my artist? You can't really gauge how much of a genius he is mm. until he's in a place where he's vulnerable. Depression came upon me. Mm. You have to find a way to drive it on top of some sort of boat that could carry the car. I did Iron Man for him. It was on this very um, label type. Our country is f There was a time that we couldn't show feet. If I don't get a performance from you, uh, it doesn't inspire me to do much. Like the fashion is forced now. If I do one of the essay videos, we give them 10. So we're supposed to shoot a helipad yeah. and the chopper was supposed to be there. Every time we shoot an artist that is going to blow, we know if I have to shoot a bad video, then I'll shoot a bad video. That's the gig. Maybe I, I bow out at some point soon. They're trying to carve themselves out, out within a style. Why never they take lights? Bona was in Quillox. Had a fun good time, stepped into the studio and freestyled the entire thing. It was Holmes' film. I didn't even think that people were going to like Bono. Filmmaking is the only art form that combines every or all the other art forms. So the low angle shot with him was Buster Rhymes. Right. You need to understand why you're doing what you're doing, not just because someone asked you to do it. It had been shot three times before. Do you honestly think David Wiz have another five years on this run? This movement can only happen from the musical. Hype Williams is the father of Afrobeat visuals. The most important cinema we need to understand is about our own cinema, but we're not even creating that. There's no management anymore. There is no machine in Nigeria. So if you are focused primarily on views, yeah. then you have no vision. What's Nigeria's use? David can be out of Nigeria for one year and nothing really happened. That really have um, was really one well, sense yeah. has happened to him except talk and just his popularity maybe just dwindled a little here. Mm -hmm. But he's fine everywhere else. Yeah. So if that's the case, then what the f is the Nigerian audience really for apart for bad mounting you <laughs> mm. or making noise about you, spreading your talking about you and other African Africans in diaspora are hearing about you about you and that's not. How I want to treat my people. You can call them whatever you want to call them, but they're still your people. They're still the largest PR, word of mouth people yeah. in the entire continent. That's the only reason why your Nigerian artists that are successful still come back here. And they just don't know, they, they don't. Every once in a while, the event, yeah. but you see the event and they don't really understand why the event is, but that's, that's the real reason. You feel a little neglect, neglect from the artists sometimes, but it's not the artist's fault either. We, the people who are in court, the custodians, supposed to be custodians of the industry themselves, themselves are, it's, it's their fault. Because if you build certain st structures, well, please let's not talk about the government. Mm. And the banks are not going to help. I had I've had a warning with them in the past three months. It is appalling what I found out. <laughs> right? So that's not gonna happen either. We if we can't build certain structures that has that gives our material values. You see music, you can't hang anything on music on the shoulders. If your television industry, your film industry, and your music, in the music industry, and your theatre industry aren't moving at, at the same time, then everybody can't eat the way yeah. they should. Do you know what it would be like for the music, music artist if your television industry is starting to get respect and the film industry is starting to get respect? It means your licensing becomes 
Course, more yeah. valuable. Yeah. Of films, of TV, and all of that, you tend to make a lot more revenue of that. You can easily be an executive producer in any of that and use your brand to move cross across and get it. So have big audience. You can use that also sell uh, uh, push your music. Music. It it just opens up the doors across board. Yeah. Now these conversations are the kind of conversations that I would I wish we were having both the old side of the market and. And note, I honestly believe that it's this movement can only happen from the musical and musical end. Because just in terms of the experience of selling, you have Nigerian artists who have been successful, who can feed their families and have never collected chairman money before. Yeah. They're not a lot, mm. but you have them. So it's possible. Yeah. Yeah, in today's in today's game, like it's almost like there's no benefits of spending too much money on a video anymore. If you have a good song, people are like, why are you even this director two million, three million, four million? Why are you doing more? When people are like literally getting more views and even better videos sometimes with five hundred k, six hundred k. That's how a lot of people are looking at it right now. Also, so let's look at the the, the algorithm on online. Yeah. Let's look at it. So, views mm -hmm. is now money. Yeah. How your brand feel, how your constituency feel about you is long term money. Yeah. So, if you are focused primarily on views, yeah. then you have no vision. Yeah. Period. The reason why you're spending on that money is yeah. so that your videography looks impressive. Yeah. It's so that, apart from it, and it's supposed to look impressive so that when you're having bigger conversations about you as a brand, mm -hmm. not necessarily just your views, your subscribe, your yeah. views, right? Look at the subscribers. Yeah. Right. It's very easy for you to lose subscribers. It's also very you gain subscribers when people believe that there's something about you that they that they should. So that's the reason why. So I look at everyone and I oh, I'm looking at all this with you. Mm -hmm. Why am I spending this amount of money and that amount? Yeah. amount of money? There's the saying of oh, money doesn't necessarily have to. Um, you don't need money to to be to be creative. Mm -hmm. It's a triangle. There's time, there's money, and there's expertise. That's the trend. If you don't have money, then you need to pump a lot more, or put a lot more weight on time yeah. and skill. Mm. So I don't have a lot of money, but I've gone ahead and found what I can find. Yeah. I have been able to spend this time to find this location, that location. I've come up with this idea and all that. The music is amazing. I can hear it. Right, um, and we're spending this time on prep. Yeah. So the more time you spend in prep, the more options become available to you. This mansion is only place is five hundred k. By the time you do one month, I've got another mansion. That one is two fifty. Mm -hmm. Two three weeks into yeah. it, far on that one again. All right, you start being able to go, but we have to travel to this place. Okay, fine. How do we make a plan to be able to do all that one back and forth, back and forth? Mm -hmm. That's the triangle. But after a while, that triangle, after you've been, you've gotten a certain level of success, you need to be able to either move, go up, even if it's not exploited. Yeah. Like when I signed, back in the day when I, when I signed artists, I used to say, say this, if you sign an art, art, artist, everybody wants to ask that I can give them 4 million, 5 million on a show. Mm -hmm. I don't that I can give me 750. Mm -hmm. My running cost is low. Yeah. Right, and we are consistent. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Right? Tomorrow, my former narrative his lifestyle is all, all the way up there. Yeah. He's under a lot of pressure constantly to make hits for that money to stay there. Yes. I can't go down. My 750 artist is has more flexibility, has a real fan base. Hmm. All right. That are really waiting for him, for his or her music and they know what to expect. So if we said that this is the kind of videos that we're shooting for this artist, yeah. that's never going to have 500 extras on set. 
that's not the kind of artist this artist is because he has some level of artistry to be able to carry everything else. Mm -hmm. Then we're good. Yeah. Again, do you know your artist? There's no management anymore. Even yeah, even like execs. That's following the new school now, can you? Exactly. There's no label again now. Exactly. <laughs> a lot of artists are being signed to other artists. Then people that are being signed to, <clears throat> they just come with their friends. And their friends are now their managers, no experience, no level of, you know, some of them. But I, I feel like that's actually what's killing what's going on now. Well, would you say that's what happened in America too? Yes, that's yeah, what I was going to uh, Yeah, but you see, America had majors. So you can decide to fuck life up, mm -hmm. and your own company up, right? But the majors now had sister companies that now had sister companies that now had I feel like they were working with like the, 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 the Rockefeller, the bad boys and all that. So it's a bam, 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 bam. There is no machine in Nigeria. That's, that was good. But now it's time to see with this international conversation, we need a machine. Yeah. The entry level of, of, of a new artist in Nigeria is back in the day. And we used to complain about it. Yeah, work and said it was. Sign this boy. We shoot three videos now. Sure, we three videos. Mm -hmm. Record. What could I present? What could I what could I produce? Go out before the shoots. Get one person that can just do management for three months. Mm -hmm. Do all this thing. Artists go. Yeah. Go all right. And we used to complain about that, but the other side of it was also a lot of street artists also came from that. A lot of talented street artists also came from. Yeah. Right. But now, you need people who can help you do your iTunes successfully. Yeah. You need people who can help you navigate the international world. Because that's mm -hmm. what I, as far as I'm concerned, that's where, that's where the fashion starts. It's not even with all these other guys. You're selling your music on iTunes, you're selling your music in all, the, all these places. Yeah. All right. And that's good. So you'd say, oh, so I don't know, are we not supposed to be able to sell our music on, on iTunes? If we had really successful local platforms, that started from Nigeria and have moved around the whole of West Africa. And that's been able to give, we, we have been able to consolidate on our African mar market and our African revenue, yeah. which is what we were doing before when Flavor could do $50,000, $80,000, which could do $150,000, $200,000. Could, we, could, we could consolidate it within our continent. Mm -hmm. All right. When a universal come and tell you, so um we want to sign you true story this happened there's a peace square right uh, they were approached internationally for them to get signed uh, they were offered let's just say i'm not, I'm not saying this word, but let's just say it was they were offered a million dollars and okay we'll give you a million dollar signing fee mm -hmm. that's not what it was i can't remember exactly how much money it was but let's just say it's a million and after we give you a sign on fee it means that oh, so 50% and pretty much how it was going to run was that the Macon were going to get a percentage. Mm -hmm. The majors were going to get a percentage and obviously Peace Corps were going to get a percentage. So, so let's say it's half, right? Mm -hmm. So Jude was like, so let me understand this. Within two months, we just made a million dollars. I just recorded, did the video with me cross yeah, and right. paid for. What are you guys bringing to the table? So they said, um, so you know, we'll give you worldwide distribution, music will go everywhere. And they're like, wait, uh, I kind of saw the world with half I already have propositions with guys in the UK mm -hmm. for this and I already have like that. You don't understand. We'll give you all the collaborations with all the big artists. I just paid for the cross to be in the song. Mm -hmm. I'm not understanding. You were one of our songs. What else? And you can't really tell me what you're going to do. Mm. Mm. What what are we now talking about? So if I'm in if I'm in a position where I'm able to say, look, I made five hundred thousand dollars last year. It's not a lot of money, but I there. And you're offering me a hundred K of my license. And I'm like, fuck you, I don't want your 100k yeah. because as a Nigerian license, I'm not going to offer you that. Like, 
And I'm looking at my license and structure. Mm -hmm. Let's get together. It's not maybe 20k. Yeah. And you hypothetically speaking. Then investors are going to need to push that money up. Yes. Proper. Because even 200 I might not take. Yeah. I don't know you. You buy your this thing, I'm not really sure about you. But they would have to push that money up because, well, I don't really need your money. I won't die if I don't have your money. Yeah. So if we haven't built our own structures, you can't demand for more. Pure business, it doesn't make any sense. So you're going to come and say, we're trying to do, uh, trying to get more. On, on. More on what? You're an emerging market as far as they say, put you under emerging market. Mm. As far as which means they don't really know how they're going to make their money back. They know, but you can't prove that they know. Because you're not already making that money. Because yeah. <laughs> if you're already making that money, then you can tell them, fuck you. Yeah. I already know what this is. I already know the potential. So we are all good. We are bragging around it. But, uh, so the, the, the business isn't growing. It's not growth. Mm. Just like the country. It's Instagram and a couple of and, uh, international usurpers. Yeah. Oh, let me not call them usurpers. Mm -hmm. Businessmen that are coming to negotiate for what they think the value of this is. Can I ask you this? So, I had a quick question, I just trying to break it down. First of all, since we're in the music space, let me just go for music. Um, obviously, growing up, um, three directors or four directors, I would say that I studied before, you know, getting into this whole thing, and just being inspired through consistency and whatnot with yourself. Um, a, a, a guy in the world called Kid Art. Um, I love Kid Art. I love Kid Art stuff because you just know it's in mm -hmm. his text. How you, so you, Kid Art, um, obviously, I love how you the colors. And then, a lot please, of please, that, please. Say that when you say you put Sir Hype. Sir Hype. <laughs> <laughs> because a lot of people don't realize that Hype Williams is technically responsible. If you shoot a video, Nigerian video, yeah. right? Before the Ulti movement or not, there is a template, which is what the Ulti was fighting against. There's a way Nigerian videos are. There was nothing wrong with that, all right? Because Latinos have a way with, with which their videos are about mm. because of where we are. Hype is the father of, and I dare anyone to come and say it's not true. I Williams is the father of Afrobeat visuals. He is the primary inspiration because if you remember all the way, fish islands is everywhere, everybody's. It was the yeah. fish islands, all right? It's the 16 by nine scope. So who's that? Yeah. That's all hype stuff. So <laughs> the person that you bring to Nigeria to come and do a class is hype. Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> you'd be, yeah. it'd be a, I don't think there's anybody, even the old school niggas are going to come out and be like, hype is in Nigeria. All right, and if it's done properly, yeah. you'd be amazed. Just, I'm sure he, he he will also be like shocked at the fact that he's he's inspired an entire continent, mm -hmm. not a country, an entire continent. So hype, Kidart, yourself, and there's a guy who's really good um, called Chasa Petty. Now Chasa Petty um, kind of colors his coloring. At, um, you know, around the time I just used to. Used to booking for videos and running, you know, fresh out the song to see that director. Mm -hmm. But hype was, I said hype, um, Chas was the deal. Yeah. And the way he colored stuff the 7D, after watching him two or three or four times, I just figured out some settings that he was now moving the camera. That's just what made my price go up at that time from 300 to about 500 pounds. Mm -hmm. But so I'll say like 40 guys. Now, um, to be able to be here for 10 plus, 15 plus, other than you. I said I said this to Fresh. Um, video directors have this one year lifespan in mind. You know, if a video director comes and goes, I've worked with this guy. The next year is going to be hot, next year, so I've worked with him. So I felt like at this point in time, it wasn't a piece to say, oh, I've worked with David, I've worked with Peace Square, because 15 other directors mm -hmm. have worked with David, Peace Square. So, how do you manage to sort of maintain. That Peace Square is not in that. Okay, not Peace Square, yeah. but you know, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. P square only P square P square only work with two people. Yeah, Technically right. is one because every time I shoot with P square, it's me and Judy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. that's that's it. They yeah. kept they always kept it that. So whether it's the builders, the lambda, you know they're 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And I felt like, you know, we had this Chesson couple of years, you know, which was good. I don't know him personally, so why am I tapped out he's making money elsewhere? We had Mo. Um, Mo had, had, a, had a good run. Um, we had a director to Q show. came that year or that yeah. day. Yeah, you had director K. Now I have boy director. And it's not like they're not good. I think what it is, it's weird, yeah. younger guys, it's cheaper for the artist to pay someone that's just coming up. That can do just as well as a good job and isn't really trying to, and I feel like it kills their lifespan. How do you feel about that and how are you able to stay on top of your game for this one? First off, I would like to, let me first answer, answer one part and please remind me just in case I didn't have any report about this question again. They are directors that have to be mentioned consistently because they are the reason why we are shooting thing now in this country. First off, you have to start. I mean, you just honorable mention how people work. Every last person I'm going to call had their contributions. And when I'm done talking about their contributions, you put them together and tell me how that hasn't influenced the last 10 years. At least as you can see. The last 10 years, we will move into what I like to call the GT era. GT, world well famous. The GT would be said to be the godfather because GT had two. GT took Shino's run and gun and made it very sophisticated. The monopod P150. All right, very good with this group. Lens converters, but primarily the GT would primarily be Nigeria's first, and I dare anybody else to tell me otherwise. Real colors. That's the nigga right there. That's where all the colors started from is the GT. Now. I always wish his name wasn't the GT. <laughs> 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 all right. Now, after DJT, simultaneously at the same time. All right, three sets of people, right, ran simultaneously, and that's what blew everything up to what you have today. First is Woody Hour. Now, Woody Hour, I don't think if you are a Nigerian or a uh, Afrobeat historian <laughs> for visuals, then you will know Gino is no be God. Gino is no be God has an iconic shot, it's the dice roll where he flipped that. So. Motion graphics, All right? Live graphics, animation. Woody started doing things like sky replacements. Yeah. All right, Woody's videos. Oof. All right. So that's his contribution. Then it would be me. All right, and. It was very, I think I thought about it very well. I wanted to be able to add a contribution because that was the only way I could be consistent, right? So I started off with saying set designs because my thing was the artists didn't look like stars. But for them to look like stars, I needed to be able to light them properly. I needed for you not to seem like it was a mistake for the costume and the background were had married properly, right? So I was very, very, very big on art design. I was very big on art design, I was very big on shadows. Because before then, Woody used to do shadows, but it wasn't mostly deliberate at the time. All right. So I started off with that. Then I moved into styling because before me, like what you know as a styling industry today, there's literally me saying I'm not doing anymore. Artists are not doing their costume anymore. So the first mainstream Nigerian music video stylist would be j michaels and j would be the first would be the first one but after that now understand something within dj teaser you would also put judo koi there yes because jude the definition of what how to edit a a dance routine for the african markets 
They won't know until today. Don't worry, me, I can't even say. You taught me how to edit <laughs> dance routines. Because I know how to edit dance routines for if it was Chris Brown I was dancing, or any of that, yeah, you could put that or hip hop dance routines. But the fact that he's telling you this needs to land, wait for it. Let the audience, the audience that you are trying to show these things, don't really know. If you do, the cuts are too fast, they can't digest that. They need to digest the meat. Let it land. Hold it for a bit, then slice it there. Or slice it on the cut right there and there. Right? And just also the choices of the shots to be able to take would be Jude. Jude's other, uh, uh, other addition would also be, well, he'd probably be the first person to actually be fully covered with 35 points around. Mm -hmm. mm. All right. And also, partly also brand, uh, um, uh, brand development visually. But because obviously there is brothers and he was part of it. You'd be able to do that. During, so that was, would be cross going from, from Jude into, um, GT into me. After that will be Max. Now, people don't realize that Max is the one that shot Apia like that long time. So, Max has been around very long time. But Max took the graphics. Max took the graphics to a completely different place. Max just took that graphics completely to. After Max, the ball stopped at Max. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, mean, I don't think there's anything else you want to do within that, mode, that graphics place. Max just took it, killed it out until till now. I mean, every boy, we have boys that are trying, but it, you still know that if Uncle Max decides that I want to do this motion graphics, you know that. <laughs> mm. All right. Um, so after after Max uh, would be uh, for me personally would be Ken. Yes, because it's, it wasn't easy for. For you to say that you're a female and you wanted to get to play yeah. with that, so yeah, at that time, eesh. right? And Kemi didn't just do. It. Kemi had videos that proved that she could direct. So it wasn't just because you're a chick. I'm not feeling sorry for you. Mm. All right. So Kemi could shoot, could edit, yeah. could direct, it, 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 which was the requirement at the time that all the boys needed to be able to do all three. Yeah. I'm like now. Nah, all these boys are enjoying all this, mm -hmm. <laughs> these new things. After uh, Kemi, I think Shasong is the last person to bring any contribution. So Shasong with more hits, uh, with more hits. Up, it, it was it was just the certain level of his pictures and, uh, and mindset. But after Shasong, everyone else has just been surfing. No, everyone else has been laying off that. They has. Because there's almost also nothing else new that you bring to the table. But these are the people who brought. So when I break that, I've broken down all these single elements. You find out all those single elements are still very instrumental to how people work today. They built these industries. These are these parts of the industry. It's from rentals to just how what you rent, yeah. gear, to styling, mm. to proper makeup, mm. to set design. To costume, uh, 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 to grade, being a proper colorist, all that is this, and all this spam happened. So by the time you were in 2010, 11, bam. So it was from then on that you start finding out, okay, it will be a fashion pad director here. And you'd say, okay, so what makes you a big director? You shot for this person, shot for that person here, but then. So as this other person shot for three out of the five videos calls, this other person has shot for even six or for more and all that. And that started bringing, which is completely normal. The problem, is, the problem with, with it is like my guy Cube used to say, um, say, back in the day, everybody had things that they were good at, strengths and their weaknesses. So if you wanted to work with this person, because you, because as as an art, um, as as management, you knew the kind of video you wanted to get. Yeah. You work with this person. So the reason why you work with X, director X, and the reason why you work with Tilly, is because you are looking for two different kinds of flavor. Mm. Now, it seems like everyone's the same. There's no, there's no 
there are no strengths and weaknesses. There's no, this is how my pictures look. This is my own style. And someone's saying, oh, if your style looks like that, I'm really high on contrast. And this is how I want my own pictures to look like. But what you now have is the artist also, artist and management also, they pray on that. They, they pray on that. They, they start to throw, oh, this person's pictures are, your, your pictures are better than this one. Mm. And just make you to boost your ego so that they can get even rebates on the budget or or something. Just make you feel good and just then go to the other person and say the same thing, say something, say the same thing about you to all that. So why not the boys not sit down and have coming like nigga that's just that nigga said that said that to you like oh he said this to me uh, to be about you and be like what the f <laughs> <laughs> oh. so so if if let's say I was great technology is going and how the industry is moving in international spaces, let's just say tomorrow um everything all about DSLRs, A7 and what about free flow shooting and whatnot. Do you think you can adjust or because you have well, to... I think I will adjust. Obviously you can, but would it be something that would be Okay, so here's the thing. That's not possible. It's only possible no, it's not possible in Nigeria. Because Nigerians will always want in quote what they think the best is. And the Western world would always sell you the high-end cameras as being the holy grail of war. And so if you don't have money now, the boys will Stay with you with the DSLR. Um, what if um, the artist of the next batch, like you said, every two years, whatever, so let's say the next two to six years, the next batch of artists are literally blowing up with average style, with not average style, um, cheaper videos in terms of you know, the equipment they're using. What you will have is you will have, okay, so see that equipment conversation. Yeah. It's not the directors, it's the artists. So, Categorically, honestly, think that the new G, uh, the new Panasonic cameras and the new Sony cameras, I can use them to achieve. I can actually even get a lot more flexible with them yeah. than with the Ari. Yeah. But your clients, they want that heavy stuff. They want that heavy stuff without mm. knowing what the difference is. Mm. So it's a. Uh, I made a choice to move switch to the Ari, which. A part of me regrets it as a my music video director side regrets it, but as a filmmaker, I don't, right? Because these cameras, as far as I'm concerned, work a lot better for the Nigerian market for film mm. and TV and all these other things, right? Nigerian music videos can be the flexibility, which I'm hoping it goes to what you're talking about because then it makes my life a lot easier. If the budget do you think that with that budget will strike it out? No, because production value isn't necessarily about the camera. Production value at the side, right? Um, set dressing, lighting. I mean, these cameras may be able to do the same thing, but lighting, and yes, they are cheaper lights. They are, they are not as cheap as you think they are, but they are more flexible lights. But you can't keep shooting the same. Nigeria, the Nigerian artist, and Nigerian audience are used to say or used to don't accept you. Mm. So Nigerian artists don't don't accept, don't respect your style. Mm. I mean, even with the old boys, even with that, it's a struggle because they're trying to carve and I respect that they're trying to carve themselves out, out within the style. Mm. <laughs> Why never they take lights? Right, so you don't have boys that are trying to do stop motion photography, uh, motion photography because, well, your audience isn't there. All right, there are a lot of ideas that you want to try that the market doesn't seem to be ready for. But that's also because we haven't really told the human stories yet. The audience get, gets tired of your, of your audience starts to open up to other styles when you have been able to tell the Nigerian story and they have gotten accustomed to, we've been able to put our stories in the map. We're comfortable with that. Okay, now let's start saying we want to try sci-fi. Yeah. 
right? You try sci-fi now, I will be like, yeah, I'm, animation is mad. What? Sugar Rush is still gonna come across you. <laughs> yeah, you know? Because we haven't retold told our stories yet. Within just filmmaking, plain filmmaking, you see me shooting with the red, you don't have to shoot with the red. Yeah. One of them is doing successfully well now, shooting with the equipment and all that, right? In a sense, the story isn't complete. If I was, everybody asks, asks me to take classes, the reason why I don't take classes is A, I, I will need an environment where I'll be, while I'm taking your practical, I'm taking your theory, just the way I, I teach. Yeah. But, I don't really think a lot of young people want to really learn. I haven't really seen because filmmaking isn't what everybody thinks filmmaking is. Filmmaking is for like six months you're going to be writing. You will see one camera. We were talking about vectors. We were talking about just motion graphics, uh, uh, motion vectors, the shadows. To screw a lot of things and just try to get them to get you to be really in that yeah. before we start going to cameras and edits. All right, I can tell you about Asian cinema, I can talk to you about Herakusa, I can tell you about, mm-hmm. tell you about everything. I can tell you about all of that, and I know about world cinema because I also want to be able to know what things have happened and just, just the evolution of cinema in other places. So that when I'm trying to build cinema here, the most important cinema we need to understand is about our, our own cinema, but we're not even creating that. So I can be here and having a conversation with you about Nigerian music videos and, and technically what we're talking about is a part of Nigerian cinema, right? But you don't have, it's hard for me to find a 26, 27 year old that I can have this conversation with. Because I'm sure there's some things I've been talking about that you guys don't even know, don't know about. Right. And, and we can't really talk about that. So if I'm explaining to you what it took to move from the PD 170 to the PD 150 to the PD 170 to the HDV, mm-hmm. it's like, how does that affect me now? That does not really do anything for me. But if I'm trying to explain to you just the value of what light you just being able to have good latitude and just what you can do without how the tech is secondary to the actual storytelling or the actual brand building all right yeah you don't want to hear that filmmaking is the only art form the only art form that combines every all the other art forms so in a sense it's the hybrid that is the most superior art form Every single art form is all involved in filmmaking. There's no other art form. That means your job is to know about everything. That's your job. (laughs) It's not to carry camera. And that's not just reserved. Like yesterday I was having a conversation about if an actor wanna hang in front of the camera reading the script. What's his job? It's not to be a celebrity and go around. It's to study. It's to study about the human behavior. behavior. Mm-hmm. It's to study about politics. It's to study about enlightening your mind. So that when you are having, so you have the right tools. So when a director is trying to explain a character to you, you can take that from him and then expand on that. But if you don't have, if you're waiting for the next paycheck or the next script to be able to work, then you are in the same place that you were the last time you shot. There has been no growth. You probably just learned how to hit your mark, how to know which lens they're using at the time, and that's what you think. What do you know? So you have a lot of young actors who don't know all. Even about cinema. I'm trying to have a conversation with you as an actor, you don't know. There's an actor, old friend of mine was, I'm not going to call him, and she was talking about the fact that she doesn't like Game of Thrones. It's uh, it's overrated. So why don't you like it? Because it's overrated. That's the reason why you don't like Game of Thrones and you're an actor. Uh, 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 you're an actor. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> she probably never watched it. <laughs> 
But how do you how do you never if 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 you've never watched it because you don't want to get your mind just right then at least get a glance at the books. Mm. Mm. You know, expand yourself on something. And what is method acting? Method acting is work. Robert De Niro had to lose weight. Had to gain weight for aging weight. Lose the weight, then get it back again. You need to understand why you're doing what you're doing, not just because someone asked you to do it. And know the importance of it. We don't know the importance of the effect of what you what you do now in terms of what it how it's going to spill across generations. You don't you don't understand that when all is said and done and you're old and gray, hopefully you still have enough money to take care of yourself. And you don't depend on your kids or even if you do. That's all you really have. As, a, as, a, as, a, as an artist, that's what makes the real reason why you being an art artist is important. It's what you have that no one else has, or just a few other major what people or great people would have, is your work. And there's not just people who even able to point at you to you to say your work is your, which takes me back to where we started from. Your kids. Who may not necessarily know a lot about it, just not how you, you were around in this period. But one day they call, you'd call them and tell them that your father did this and where you know he's his. Uh... So Hollywood had the, the walk, of, walk of fame, the yeah. star fame. Right? If, if you've been a good man or you've relatively been a good man, your kids get to a point where they really begin to understand you because as a man, you make a lot of mistakes. But when your kids start to get at a certain age where they understand you with the mistakes that you've made and they look at that as a, in reflection to themselves, like, okay, yeah, I can see where my father tried because I tried it and I failed. You don't really have anything, know anything about your, your father until you're in your 30s. Hmm. You don't. You said a lot of assumed a lot of things until you're in your 30s. And you can you make us you made your own mistakes yeah. and you objectively, especially if you've grown, be able to look at that side, look at yourself and side by side with your, your father, your father, not your mother, your father. That's when you can say to yourself, "Yeah, I can see why he, yeah, I can see why he up there." I have some understanding. I may not condone what he's done, yeah. but I can I have some level of empathy for what he's done. But when your kids are now going to take their own kids and say, that's dad's stuff, that's my father's stuff. That sense of pride that your son would have to be able to show his grandchildren. When you're 70, 80, that's all you live for. Mm. That's all you live for. That is the cap on I've been in my that you live for. You could die at that point in time and you be that God. At least you know your God and you know where you're going to if you're lucky enough. And that's what Nigerian artists have been up with, African artists have been up with. So do you make films as well? Funny story. I started making music videos because I didn't want to be in Hollywood. I wanted to be able to create my own ecosystem and be able to make my own films and that's what this journey has been about. Mm. I'm not a music video director, I'm a filmmaker. That's pretty much what I went to school for. That's what I used to do before I went to school. Yeah. That's so this has been a yeah, hell, a 15 year journey to try and I'm hoping that next year I'm gonna go back home because home is film. I'm a visitor mm. in this <laughs> music a tourist. I'm a, I'm a tourist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tourist in this music video space. Well, well, a couple of clips in King of the Boys that I've always made me feel like maybe the actor said it's I was supposed to DP for King of Boys, but it was, it was good. I can't DP for people. Because I, I'm not a cinematographer. Strangely, as people don't, don't get 
I started DP because I couldn't find people who would understand what I wanted. What I wanted. But, but DP is also an extension of my directing. So, and also an extension of my writing, or how I perceive scripts. It's, uh, I don't perceive the performance, unlike other directors, from directors who refuse to see the performance and think about just, okay, the angle I want to take the shot. I perceive the entire scene from sound, the sound design, score, cinematography, then camera movements, and acting. I do that when I'm on set. So when I'm, I do that in pre-production. So my first phase in pre-production is that. So when I get to a comfortable place, this is my process, then I leave it. Then I do a lot of reading. I do a ton of reading to the actors. Oh, Jesus God. A lot of reading. I need the actors to be able to, for the character to be in their skin. So that allows me enough time when we get on set for me to go back to thinking about it, sound, cinematography, uh, that's both the lighting, um, lighting before I go. So I don't have to give you too much, too much direction because it's already in you. So if I also want to flip things, I can also tell you, let's change this line, let's change this motion because of that. Watch how you just really right now. It's a lot more fun working with actors for me that way than having to figure out what we are doing on one set. Mm -hmm. Of discovering the depth of what we are doing on one set. So hence, because of my work, my process of making, making films, and I'm not going to find anyone who's an EP or producer, who's really going to understand that, <laughs> understand that, understand that, I decided, no, I'm going to be in this place and I'm going to harness all my skills and I'm going to make some sort of brand for myself. And while I'm doing that, I also start to be, gather assets and start to understand how to build my own ecosystem All right that when i start moving to that process um i envisage that what's going to happen in the next two years is a lot of the new your boys are going to move into the cinematic space and things are going to be interesting mm. I, i've actually been thinking that as well well the conversation's already started i'm telling you Right, the conversation has already started already because the three minute space isn't there, is it? That three minutes, four minute space, and it's not. There's a need to be able to expand. Mm -hmm. All right, so it's it, it's not necessarily even just do more because it's carrying everything from the music space plus that fan base. All right, being able to yeah. tell all the urban stories and bring it into TV and film space. So it has a lot more depth and a lot more meaning. Because the setups that we're doing that, I mean, look at Ajay's opening scene in Madhu. Kiss comes out of the car, follows and goes into, into, in, into that. You literally can see that as a scene that can go for about two minutes. Yeah. Mm. All right. So being able to give a lot more depth into the stories, the pictures that we are trying to and say, can you already have the fan base and just be able to move mm -hmm. a lot of that? So it's, I think I would define it as the uh, Black American cinema of the late 80s into the early early 90s. So that's um, Spike, John Singleton. So do the right thing and all, and all that. Just how, remember they, so this is the thing. They have the trifecta. Yeah. Straight thing, we also have the trifecta. What I, I, I call trifecta is they have the, style fashion it was very fight the power very you know, very african mm -hmm. with all that they had the music hip-hop and they had the chords which is just black excellence black black people still yeah we have the music hmm. we have the chords which is our own art our stories, which is wrapped around. So, so the stories were, is that it was also the crack epidemic and it was all that. Our own is the our epidemic. We have the cause mm. and we have, definitely have the fashion. Yeah. So we have the trifecta. That's the bigger export. Music isn't, music is a part of it. That's the bigger export. That's how we are able to get Hollywood to be able to think we want a Nigerian bad guy. 
because this is the archetype. We've seen this already in films yeah. before. I want that archetype in a, in a Hollywood film. And that's how your actors get to cross over. But in isolation, I'm saying I'm going to Hollywood, I'm going to go and hustle my way. They'll first have to deconstruct you and change you to what they want you to be. Mm-hmm. It's like Jet Li is moving to a Hollywood little weapon. He didn't have to say shit. That Kung Fu that used to do that. Just come and do it here. We want that Kung Fu bad guy. Dangote is very me. I had lived in that kind of face my face before. Mm. The kid on the bus walking to school after this. That's me. That's literally me. I walked that road. Mm. When the school is from very similar to that. So it's yeah. very, very me. Walk past shrine. Not this shrine. Fella shrine. You walk past fella shrine with my uniform like that. All right, so it was very, very me. Yeah. Yes, when I get into phases, I change. Class shot it, it's very vain. It's not very me. But when we're trying to get a Instagram uh, handle, I think we're having issues with the name. So Ilbis just said, just call it Clarence shot it. And they did that. And then the guy just started saying, no. Okay, so me starting to put my credits and videos wasn't very me. It was my guy, Banjo, was like, look, we are, if we don't put the name, we're not going to get clientele. So you know what? F*** you. I'm going to put it, come and beat me. <laughs> so he started off by first putting capital there. Yeah. Then, uh, yeah exactly. then I started putting my name there. Then he just yeah, took it. Like, some artists, some directors, I remember like, um, well, that's your boy. I just remember seeing Patrick Ellis. I don't know what he looked like, and I didn't see any video from him again. But that name stuck to me. Yeah. You heard uh, about the, ba- the backlash, obviously, from um, Burners Gay. Ah, oh, come on. Okay, Burners Gay. Oh, yes! I gave you backlash to a guy. Ah, 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 yeah, but, but you know, I'm trying to, as a filmmaker, you know, I'll just assume that you didn't get what you needed or whatever. But also, maybe because we all imagined something else and you went and you went this way. Uh, can you explain to us what? All right, all right, at least one of you that accused me as being able to actually ask me. <laughs> yeah, of course, in person. Okay, all right, all right. So, okay. um, I think that's where my first show started. Uh, 2018, my first video started in 2018. Um, I had there were videos that I shot that were successful in the first quarter. Uh, I had come for Jim David's Bobo, Tiwa, Tiwa, Revenis, Jen Diet, then I So there'd been a lot of them. Then later on, by the second quarter, I think that was when uh, Wiz and Duncan. There'd been a lot of. Is he the only one? Is he the only one? The only one? Conversation that was going on. That started getting to me. I was tired because the thing is, you keep having to improve yourself to the audience all the time. Gets, it gets tired and then you don't it's almost like everything you did before doesn't matter everything you did before which no one cares it's about what you just done now it's a lot of pressure but what people don't know about Ye is that Ye had been shot three times before before it got to me Ye had three or two I know of two, but I think I heard a sleep before it got to me. Now, I didn't even know how successful the song was, but it wasn't even bad. My treatment was completely different. That was not my treatment. My treatment was Burnaby Flag walking on the third mainland bridge. And on top of the Milan Bridge and other things happening around the same, same time. It was very political. So, Dangote is here. I don't know if you missed me too. Mm. 
Dangote is actually a, what I would have shot. But there were two things. First off, the video had to be ready in five days. Second, we were in a rainy season. Third, Bonner couldn't go outside because he had boys and the police. It was just his mom just kept telling me, you know, if you carry this boy out, where you want to take him to, I'm go ask him. And I, first I was the one on my own at testing, but I now had to think about it because it would be a freaking fucking disaster. So imagine me having to flip on Saturday and some shoes on Monday. I had to call the production meeting and flip everything around Saturday night. So here's the thing. You make compromises every time you shoot. It's a negotiation. Negotiation. What he was concerned about, the time, what his camp was concerned about at the time was international market. How are we going to present him internationally? So in my mind was, look, fuck all this. Sis, I can't do all this. Again, this is me not knowing how big the song was to people. Like, look, I want to be able to shoot, and this is my thing when I go into that zone. If anybody outside looks at Burner, Burner, they like Burner. So I stripped everything else and left Burner. So the low angle shot with him was Buster Rhymes. Was that Buster? Yes, that very, very, I, I wanted to be able to, for you people to like yeah. him. They may not like the video, but for them to like him. I didn't know I was going to throw myself into something that everybody had turned into a cult following. <laughs> because at that time I thought, all right, so my balls are going to be on. I mean, my balls are always on line every, every mm -hmm. time with, with the big axes, but it's, this is a microscope. <laughs> I had no clue. I thought about sin, which worked for the artist, yeah. but didn't work for me. And from then on, that's when, well, Twitter went, put me on the catalyst. Yeah. So when I was going to shoot Bono, I just said, you know what, Fuck Twitter, Fuck all the LT people are talking about punish everybody. <laughs> on these shoots, me, I'm just going to have fun. Yeah. So I didn't even think that people were going to like Bono. I just said, look, I was just going to shoot me. I'm just. Mm -hmm. I knew there had to be a reason like this. There's, there's, no, there's no how that that would have been. Uh, because you see, again, you guys don't. If you guys listen to music, and a lot of directors would give you lots of uh, treatments in terms of how they would shoot. Yeah. All right. Just in terms of oh, we could do this, we could do that, and a lot of other things. But if you listen to yeah. It's when I was in Quillox, having a fun good time, stepped into the studio and freestyled the entire thing. But here is his perspective of which is we after he became a lot of it was he was like that before, but it became what he the recipe that he used to move on but it's his what was raw in his mind just in terms of how he saw certain it's very political so if there's a oh we could do this we could do that we could do a lot of things but that probably still wouldn't have done it you needed to be simpler well if you wanted to be really artistic say you own this anymore Oh, we are trying to be artsy with it. You need it to be a f***ing simple video that was about Burner. And how Burner's vision about things are. It needed to be that. If I had done that, I would have still got nailed on the cross. So this is not the first time I got nailed. The very first time I got nailed on the cross, I got death threats. I remember getting calls 
people sending me text messages and telling me that they were going to find me and kill me. It was nice street you know what? So we shot the in the studio because we couldn't take knives outside because we wouldn't have been able to control the shoes on a 650 budget. Hmm. So we shot it in the studio. So we started calling it studio credibility. Yeah. And we went the truck. And after that, I don't think I stayed away from shooting a lot of the big, big songs for a while. I got really comfortable in shooting some artists, making artists. That day I not thought showed them. Mm. I started learning how to new artists, good song, with the drive to push. Five actresses, at least off the top of my head, I can't call them names. And I know five legendary artists in the 80s who had a really, really immense impact. Mm -hmm. You don't know their names. But once you know their names, yeah. it's because they're not poor. Hmm. It's because they can still walk into this room and still have the personality that still makes them makes you respect them. Yeah. Wow. 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 So it's the artistic community don't in Nigeria a lot of the guys that get back don't really know the dangers. I know people that there's a, there's a huge set that came back from the UK in the 80s. 60% to 70% of them went back. Hmm. Went back and never wanted to come back to Nigeria again. Mm -hmm. They really want that to repeat itself. There's serious conversations that should be had, and it can't be Broadweiser that is putting together those meetings or no, no. some structure. It's just us that need mm -hmm. to sit down and have some serious conversations with ourselves yeah. as to how we want and it's not a we can't be entitled the artist doesn't owe you sh the artist is also trying to make sure that they remember they are part of us in a sense they're not in a sense they are they're part of us yeah. but the things that we need to the people that are behind the mic, uh, behind the camera, the people, all those people need to, to be able to put certain things in place so that we'll be fine and so that they will be fine because they can't do it. They may be the ones making all the money now. But I flip or told Or even Judo Koye told me, he said, an artist isn't that jiggy once he's past 45, if he's lucky. An actor, you can still get old man with a Yeah. So your shelf life is very... I mean, honestly... Do you honestly think David Ruiz have another five years on this run? We know that. It's not a, it's not showing for them. So what did people like Jay-Z and Nas do? To make sure that they may not have that run with the music, mm -hmm. but their brands still stay. What did they do? Diversified. They what? Diversified. They diversified. First off, within the sector. Yeah. And spread out into other sectors. Things connected so to music. So we don't have, the music business isn't growing because we're not putting back into the music. Oh, and I'm not asking you to put, it's not philanthropy. Yeah. I'm not asking, it's not an NGO. I'm not asking you to do that. Mm. But put, be able to make more money so you can provide a lot more jobs and open a lot other doors for you to be able to make more money. That's so for you to be able to make more money. Mm. You're not, if you wait for the banks to do it, if you wait for the business people, the business business people that are coming to the business to come out uh, to be the yeah. ones to do it then you would they will never be able to do it in a way that would that would really benefit you yeah and none of them are doing it we have to do it ourselves no uh, we have to do it ourselves there's no artist that has hmm. a full-on backline that services in december because if you had 
back in the day, yeah. my father would have trucks with the back and have a bag. But if you had, mm. if you were, I you say, but Rakin had a back line, mm-hmm. and he's gigging in Australia yeah. in December. His back line is making money here, but you're also getting really quality music because yeah. I, I I hear that what's really cool about his his band and. But it's not just oh I have a band. Mm-hmm. It's like the tech is there. You're you're able to rent, and I'm able to focus on the sound being right. Yeah. As an artist, I'm able to speak to other artists to be able to say, look, if you're not on this pre- this stage, you're not on premium. So artists start saying, if I'm doing my gig, it has to be this kind of stage, and that becomes the new golden standard. If they were two studios that belong to music video directors. Two studios that belong to music video directors. A couple of things you know you have. Your rigging will be perfect. Your vanishing curves would be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. You know that these things will be set. You know you have a place where there's wood and there are art designers there. So as a director, you may not necessarily have to pay art designers. You might just pay everything for everything in house. It becomes mm-hmm. a one-stop shop type of vibe because he knows what he's trying to do. So the people that do these things put back into it. And that way you are able to actually get a standard that cuts across everything every, everywhere else. That's growth. What was your current relationship with um, I know you've had this long term business with the you know, place, you know, the whole night house, correct? Family. We're still family. I haven't seen Robert and been a long time because they're near the other side of town. But Bliss is supposed to be this day first, they still there's still one family. So it's like still comes to still here every night. Mm. Right. No one, I always feel like you always get the best of best videos. That's not to him. Later, you say it's funeral. You know, say it's chima. I used to give. Yeah. It's easier when you wait. Okay, so I started a record label because of that. Mm. I'm, I kept on trying to speak to artists about. See, everybody's using the word brand now. I said, 2006, six, seven. Mm. When you say brand, you're like, what, oh, blue brand, blue man? Mm-hmm. Oh, what are you talking about, mm-hmm. right? In order to, to show people, I decided I was going to set up a regular label. I was going to sign access and I was going to do, set up the access to where I think they should be so people can see what it should look like. Yeah. So that was my gimmick of for being able to get clientele as also for music videos. So you come to me and be like, that thing you did for funeral, that thing you did that thing, I want you to be able to do for my, my artist. So it, it's that it moved beyond shoot a video. Mm-hmm. Please create an image. Let's work on creating an image for the artist. That's pretty much how the last 10 years had worked for me. The dress, how did that, you know, your father keeps a, a mean baldy. Um, when I come and get here, I get a migraine. Mm-hmm. I, I really didn't enjoy, have it. enjoy everyone going to the barber. So I said, you know what? Okay, whatever's going to happen to this game, let it happen. So you never had it tested? Last year, once. I don't know yeah. if I'll do it again, but I might, I probably will. Yeah. But uh, that was not the plan. It was, I didn't think it was going to be dreads. I thought it was just going to be really unkempt afro. I keep <laughs> saying that, but yeah. an afro. <laughs> <laughs> it just formed this way. Yeah. So that's, that's the show. I think it's fine. Mm-hmm. It's still. Um, any, any plans of cutting it one day? Yeah, if you see me cut it, before it used to be once I have 200 million naira in my account that is my own, it's moved on now to 500. Personal 500 million naira in my account, I cut it. I cut it, I cut it, then nobody will see me for six months. I'm going to rest six months, I'm going to live life first, then come back and walk into office and people know it's me. Wow, I'll cut the beers and grow it while I'm away, then walk out. You know, do all those things to yeah. be a fret board. Yeah. Come back and have fun because I have the money to be able to keep up with the fret board. Mm. Uh, <laughs> but not now that we're on the streets. Yeah. <laughs> That's busting on the streets. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Alter Daily, the alternative network. Mm-hmm.